So thanks for coming to our talk. My name is Ryan Pentney, and I'm a research analyst for the vulnerability research team at Sourcefire. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague, Patrick Mullen, principal research engineer. Um, and we're here to talk to you today about a new open source project that we've been working on called Razorback. Um, so Razorback is essentially a new detection and forensics framework. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what it is and how it works in just a second. But first I'd like to sort of outline the formative issues behind its development as well as talk about some of the problems that it was, um, that it was designed to address. All right. So we've seen in recent years that there has been um, a shift from a focus on server side uh, exploitation to client side. And it's been made things very, very difficult for defenders. Um, so a lot of client-side attacks deal with uh, exploiting vulnerabilities in the software that's responsible for parsing complex file formats or uh, in-browser in -browser rendering languages such as JavaScript and Flash. The same complex nature that makes these formats and languages ripe territory for exploitation presents a variety of challenges for those on the defense side. For one, for a format aware detection engine to even get to the part of the file, let's say it's examining a file that it's interested in, it must mimic, at least in part, um, the parsing capabilities of the software program itself. Um, for example, say you're um, parsing through an office document and you know that there's a vulnerability in a specific table. Um, uh, and say that the offset of that table in the file um, is found in another header that at another completely different part of that file. The soft, your detection software has to be able to first parse up to that header, extract the offset, have collected enough parts of that file to get to where that offset uh, points to, and um, then look at that field inside that table and compare it against either a fixed value or, or some other field in the file. Um, that's a rather simple example, but it, it gets even more complex when you consider the fact that file formats are written by insane people. and. Uh, they like to do a lot of crazy things with them. Um, so this makes things troublesome and performance intens intensive, especially when you consider how, um, how int intensively and exhaustively a lot of these detection engines must examine these files and frequently as well. Number two, um, there are numerous options available at the disposal of the attacker. Um, many interesting targets with varying degrees of exploitability are available. Um, there are many methods of delivery. So a uh, malicious PDF, for instance, can be delivered over mail, uh, can be downloaded over HTTP. Um, someone could just walk up and hand you a disk with it on it and say, hey, here, look at this. Um, that's another way. Multitude of obf obfuscation techniques, of course, which can make the same exploit repackageable in different ways. And this makes um, signature-based approaches uh, and superficial attempts at detection useless. Now, finally, Traditional IDS and IPSs um, are bound by wire speed. Um, Stream-based reassembly can fall short of full file reassembly, especially when you're talking about low latency environments where a detection engine must examine, um, examine all these files while maintaining um, multi-gigabit speeds and mimicking the parsing capabilities of hundreds or thousands of client-side machines. So exploits buried in, in buried in formats that require uh, exhaustive parsing may go undetected at the preservation of speed. So while real-time in inspection allows for preventative measures uh, against malicious traffic to be taken, there's also a need to be able to accurately and profoundly profile all traffic regardless of the time cost. Even if it takes a little bit more time to detect, you still want to know what's made it through to your network and what's, what machines are affected. So this is where Razorback comes in. So what we've done here is uh, we've actually taken the functionality of data capture, detection, and reporting and split those up. So the cost for a robust and more accurate detection may be that you don't have the option of blocking on something the first time that it's seen, but, uh, but that might, you're still going to want to know what's on your network. That might not matter anyway. Um, this, of course, doesn't mean that real time isn't necessary or useful. Uh, it is. On the contrary, real time analysis is effective at filtering out a majority of attacks. Razorback simply has a different set of goals. Giving up on most blocking capabilities in exchange for the ability to fully parse data, emulate client machines, and provide a more in-depth level of analysis. 
So a lot of what we sought out to do when we, uh, when we set about developing this was uh, address the needs of many of the an analysts and forensics experts uh, who deal with responding and adapting to uh, threats of a more so uh, sophisticated nature. You hear, this, uh, you, you hear this term APT thrown around a lot. Um, you know, supposedly there are appliances that you can just plug in and we're, are made to, they're designed to block APT. Um, this is kind of a sore point for a lot of us in the industry. Uh, APT is not, so what APT really is, is um, it talks about a level of sophistication and talent. Um, you're talking about people armed with vast resources and knowledge of your network specifically whose goals are not to turn out cookie cutter exploits but to make inroads into your network and stay there for a very, very long time. Um, so what we developed was uh, a framework that was intended to support analysts in intelligence driven response, offer up extensible, open and customizable tool to aid in the tasks of forensics, incident response and threat identification. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Patrick to talk a little bit about the architecture. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, so right before we get started, I uh, just want to point out that we're going to talk about a lot of things on a very abstract level. Uh, so. Stay with me. Uh, we'll begin to a demo where you can see all this stuff in, ac in action. Uh, oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be a demo that will tie all this together. At this point, it'll be a uh, more conceptual piece describing what all the different functions are. Uh, so first, the framework goals. Uh, we really drive. What really drove this project from the beginning is the is the question of what would you do with a pointer to data and a size. Uh, we really want to make it so that you can have any sort of data from any system come into your system, into your, um, into the framework and then be processed in arbitrary ways. Uh, it's really scalable. Uh, everything has a very simple, um, a single task that it does. And uh, we'll go into the different types of tasks that we, uh, that we uh, set out for this system. Okay, as I said, uh, everything in the system is in a nugget. Uh, the nuggets have a very simple, have a single task that they do and they feed their information to and from the, from the dispatcher to uh, achieve the goals of the, of the greater task. Okay, so uh, there, as we said, there are a bunch of different nugget types and we'll talk about each one uh, in a moment. Okay, and the overall view, uh, as, as you can see, the dispatcher is what ties everything together. Uh, the primary pieces of data or the primary nuggets that we'll talk about uh, that are developed to the, to the, uh, today are the collection nuggets which will gather data, the uh, database which will store all the information, uh, detection nuggets which will process that data and we'll have output nuggets that do the alerting and also other types of nuggets that we'll talk about. The dispatcher is the first piece and it's the key piece and what the VRT is supplying as the primary component of Razorback is really the heart of the system. Is We call it the uh, defense router. Uh, it handles all the incoming data, uh, handles all the output data and also provides mechanisms for uh, correlation nuggets to access the database and do advanced, uh, um, advanced analysis of the data that you have. Uh, we also have an API that is developed to make the jobs of the programmers easier so you can make custom API or uh, custom nuggets and perform uh, duties that we don't have right now. Okay? It's database driven. Uh, a lot of the data that's in there is kind of what you'd expect. It has configuration information of course, uh, the different types of metadata so you can keep track of not only what data is in there and event data, also just kind of why. There's information in there, you know, as simple as DNS queries. You know, we'll show later about how you know a DNS query in itself is not necessarily a vulnerability, but by doing um, modeling and analysis of the different types of activities that a host is performing, you can then glean some additional information about that. Say, for example, DNS pack, uh, queries are you know indicative that the host has been compromised, and they are going out to fetch you know additional payload. Okay. Uh, Okay, so as such, because it is a nugget architecture, uh, everything has a sa the same basic architecture where it's talking to the dispatcher and uh, registering and uh, performing the different tasks. 
Uh, we use UUIDs to identify everything because it makes it really easy to add and remove elements from the system depending on what tasks you need. And we'll talk about talk a little bit about what each kind of nugget does. The first one we're going to talk about is a collection nugget. Now, again, what's great about Razorback is that it's a framework. You can use anything. Uh, with the collection nuggets, you can use the more traditional thing, kind of like what IDS does and sniffs the tra sniff traffic as it goes across the wire. But because the framework allows you to send data to and from the dispatcher using anything, you can actually have agents on your server. You could have an SMTP proxy or, or a web proxy or be on your mail server itself that will gather data as it comes in and then you don't have to worry about things like lost packs and such and it can go and talk right to the database. You can also even do more non-traditional pieces of data such as log data or anything else. Whatever kind of information you want to have in your network and use for anal analysis later, whether it's attack data or just simply, again, keeping an eye on what's going on, you can do a nugget for that. Uh, when we talk to the dispatcher, before we do that, we'll actually check a local cache and Ryan will talk about that extensively later, uh, just to make sure that we don't have to talk to the dispatcher if we don't, if we don't have to. You know, we, we really want to make sure that we don't have to send this data through the network and, um, you know, take up extra time that we don't need. And if it's not in the, in the local cache, we'll send it to the dispatcher. Uh, when it's sent to the dispatcher, it will be sent to the relevant detection nugget. Detection nugget can actually be kind of a generic term. Obviously, there, there's data and attacks that you look for, but also we have a detection nugget that will do simply take data that's given, split it into logical subcomponents to then get sent back to the dispatcher for further analysis by the specialized nuggets. Okay, output nugget. Output nuggets are, uh, as you'd expect, whatever kind of, output nuggets as you would expect provides a user interface or means for providing alerting and other kinds of data to the, uh, to the operator. Uh, whenever an alert is generated, the dispatcher will talk to each of the output nuggets, say that there's an alert available, and then the alert, the output nugget, if it decides that it's a type of data that it's interested in, will then ask additional information. As you can see, we try to really split things up. And what, the one I want to point you out to, or point out to you, is the normalized data block. If there's some, uh, some analysis that we do on the data before we alert, say uh, uncompress some data or deobfuscate some JavaScript, we actually give you access to that. You know, it really doesn't do you a lot of good if we say there's something bad in this file and then you look at it and you're just looking at an, a compressed data block. You know, it really doesn't give you any information. So we, tr we do our best to make sure that the information that you're given is useful and makes the analyst job much easier. But not every, data, not every nugget that we have is the simple get, see people, bad people doing bad things on the internet. We also have these intelligence nuggets. Intelligence nuggets are really analysis engines, I'm sorry, they're nuggets that provide data that is not necessarily of an alert nature. I mentioned earlier that, um, you know, you could have DNS queries stored. Uh, by, at, by storing all these DNS queries and seeing that an infected host then goes to, you know, all these different hosts as part of continuing its, its tasks of embedding itself in your network, uh, you can then take a correlation nugget and see that other hosts are doing that same activity. So even though you missed the part where that host was being compromised or maybe it was just, you know, compromised, you know, long ago, when you see it performing these same exact uh, activities, you can then infer that something bad is going on in that host and go about your cleanup. Uh, so does anyone here deal with uh, APT and cleaning up the network uh, after somebody has gone in and owned you up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, this right here is really where it makes your job a lot easier. You know, it, it really is limitless. Uh, like anything you can do, any sort of data mining, this is where it would be done. Okay? And what also can be done for correlation nugget is we can talk to a defense update nugget. Defense update nuggets, they're really cool because since we write them or you write them, because it's part of the Razorback system, they are completely vendor agnostic. You can write a, a nugget that would not only update multiple devices at, the, at once, they can be multiple devices across multiple vendors. 
Uh, an example that, that I love is that when you realize that you have somebody coming in from the outside and they're trying to go through your network and everything, you could use a defense update nugget to modify your router, redirect them over to a honey net, and then start up some daemon loggers to log all their activities. So they'll think that they're going through your network and doing all this you know, terrible stuff, but meanwhile, you are analyzing what they're doing, you're gathering all their tools.